So in this video, we're going to look at something uh, a little bit more useful and something a little bit more interactive for the user. And we're going to be uh, storing text that's entered in a text area in our Dropbox account and syncing that up and also storing it on our server. Now, what we are going to be doing is storing this in a text file for now, just because it's a little bit easier than storing it in a database. But in reality, any data that you want to keep persisting on your application, it's probably best to save it in your database rather than a file on the server. And that will be become a lot clearer once we're at the end of this video. So what is this text area and why are we using it? Well, if we uh, type in some text, so maybe hello and hit save, that will have gone ahead and stored within our code course uh, folder. Remember, we're, uh, we have this apps folder within our uh, Dropbox account with code course. That would have saved something called something.text. And if we check the contents of that, you can see it says hello. And again, like I said, we're storing this locally as well. So essentially, we're writing to this file and then we're syncing it with our Dropbox account here. So if I was to type, say, hello there, and hit save, that goes ahead and updates the file on Dropbox, pulls that down locally so it's in sync, and then you'll see that in our Dropbox account there, that data has changed. So, um, like I said before, this is being stored uh, in a file, but again, you would have within your application some kind of way of storing data in the database against the user's account, but then you can apply the same concept to syncing this with Dropbox if you need to. And that obviously happens when we hit save. So let's go ahead and build this and hopefully by the end of the video you'll have learned something really cool that you can actually apply to your own application. So we're starting on index.php. We've got nothing on here, just all of the uh, files that we're using to uh, authenticate with the Dropbox. And I'm already obviously authenticated. Let's go uh, and build a little form here that's going to allow us to enter this data. Uh, so I'm just generating a document layout here. And in the body, we can have a form with a post action, a post method, sorry. And the action is going to be index.php. So it's going to post through to the same file. Again, with in your application, you'll most likely have a better structure. We'll just use this for testing. So I'll create a div called field here. And inside of here, we'll generate a text area. And let's give that a name as content so we can pick that up with the post super global array. And the ID we can just get rid of for now. So inside of the text area um, tags here, we're eventually going to want to pull in the latest content from Dropbox. Um, but for now, we'll just leave this empty. And we also want a submit button. And let's put the value of that at save. So when we refresh, then we are getting the following form. So we're going to be able to type something in here and hit save. That's going to store it in our Dropbox account. So the first thing that we want to do then is actually go ahead and grab the file from Dropbox, whether or not it exists. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can you can do this in a, a slightly different order if you want to. It doesn't really matter. But again, if you are building this into your application, you might have some way of a user creating, say, uh, a new text file or a new article that would save into your database. Then it would write the contents to Dropbox. In my case, all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a text file variable. I'm going to use my client to get a file. We've already seen this before. This is basically pulling a file down from your Dropbox account. We provide the name. And again, I'm hard coding this, but it would be uh, entirely up to you uh, how you implement the ability for users to name files. And then we use fopen to open a file and we want to uh, write that. So the file name here is going to be stored in files. So in this empty files directory over here, and we'll call that something.txt. And again, in here, what you might want to do is pull the file in, read the content, store that in your database. So now that we've done that, then we have the text file, but we need to actually grab the file content. So the file content is going to be file get contents, and then we provide the file name. In our case, it's going to be files something.txt. So we're pulling it down and then reading the data. So if we were to echo file content, and well, we're not going to get anything in here just yet because we don't have any files stored. 
Uh, so actually we'll leave that out for, for now. Okay, so now that we've got the file content, we want to be able to actually write it. So when we submit this form through to the same page, we want to check if uh, the content key is available in the post super global. That's pretty straightforward. We just do an if use is set to check dollar underscore post content. And then what happened here? Well, when the user hits the save button, we want to upload um, the content of that file to something.txt on the user's remote Dropbox account. But if you remember, when we looked inside the client file, we have a upload file method. We're not going to use this because that would involve actually uploading a specific file. Because we're dealing uh, with text, we can actually use the upload file from string function, which is a lot simpler because all we do is pass in data here, which is a string. So we provide a path, a write mode, which remember can be add, update, but we're gonna look at a new one called force and I'll explain the reason behind that in a moment. And then we just provide the data. So we know that we can use this. So all we want to do is say client upload file from string we provide the name of the file, remember, on the remote path because we're accessing the API now. And then we want to set the write mode. So it's namespaced under Dropbox, write mode. Now, if we were to use add like we've seen before, this is going to be fine for the first time we write the file because we're just adding a file to Dropbox. But the next time we run add, what that's going to do is it's going to create a new copy of the file or, or sorry it's going to create another file but it's going to name it with a bracket one at the end the next time we do it we'll name it with a bracket two and let's just see what this does and then we'll look at uh, using force and see the difference this makes so that's going to post the content let's just yeah let's run this and maybe just type in hello there so that's going to upload that file. There it, there it is in our Dropbox sync, and we see we've got hello there. But now what happens if I want to make a change? Bear in mind the actual contents isn't being updated here yet. We've still got that to do. Let's type hello there. Now what's happened here is it's created something one. So it's creating a new version of this because we're adding rather than updating. But what happens if we do use update and the file doesn't actually exist? I've just removed it from my Dropbox here. If I use hello, hit save. You can see that this gives us an error because what we've not done is we've not provided a revision number or a revision ID for that file. If that file doesn't already exist, we don't have a revision uh, ID for this. And a revision ID is basically uh, each uh, time that file is changed, it will be assigned a uh, version. But in our case, this is so simple that all we really need to do is force it, regardless of whether it's a file that already exists or a file um, that doesn't exist and we want to create it. So in this case, what's going to happen is when we type some text in and hit save, that goes ahead and creates the file and we see hello and when we update this and hit save again we go back to this and you can see that's been updated and we've not got an additional file being created so remember if you are in doubt just check out the write mode class and you can uh, check out what happens here within each method so now that we've done that we're still getting the file contents we did that initially so file content is now going to contain whatever's in our local version. And in this case, you'd probably want to again pull that from the database or something like that, because at the moment, obviously, we're using get file to write it to a specific location, which with the um, PHP SDK, unfortunately, you have to do anyway. But in this case, what you would do is you'd write it. And then at this point, you'd store it in your database and then, you know, you can then output it to the user and it's stored in your database now then rather than always storing it in a file. So now all that's left to do then is just output the file content in here. So we're going to echo 
we're going to use HTML special chars and we're going to provide the file content in there but we're also going to provide ent quotes to escape double and single quotes and we're also going to provide the character encoding which is obviously defined on our meta tag within our head as well just so if the user were to enter any you know malicious tags or anything like that um, all of the uh, characters like uh, for example script like this this would be converted to an entity and this would also be converted to an entity so if I were to just save the content out here that's now saved it's been synced to my Dropbox so you can see there that that's been updated and also if we were to just view the page source and just hit enter on that then you can see that the um, less than less than and greater than signs have been created to entities um, just to protect you against any XSS attacks. So that is pretty much it. With not much effort at all, we've created a very simple way for the user to enter something into a text box, save it, have it saved locally, whether that is in a file, which I wouldn't recommend, or saved on the uh, within their database, um, uh, database record relating to them. You can keep up to date with the changes by just uh, uploading them to Dropbox. And there we go, just a little simple fun app and it's very, very simple to do.